Good afternoon and welcome to WM Berg's webinar on gear products and applied terminology. Today's agenda we'll be covering the types, styles, and features of WM Berg's, uh, Berg's gears. We'll discuss common terms used in the gear industry and how you select a WM Berg gear. So let's to start off, we'd like to first discuss um, some basic gear terms that we'll freak, use frequently during this presentation. A diametral pitch, or from this point referred to just as pitch, is the number of teeth in a gear having a one inch pitch diameter. So a better way to explain that, a gear having 48 teeth and a one inch pitch diameter is a 48 diametral pitch. So you can also say the same thing of a 24 pitch gear. If it's 24 pitch with 24 teeth, it's a one inch diameter gear. This way you get an idea in your mind what the tooth size is based on what the diametral pitch is. Now not to confuse the difference of pitch and pitch diameter, uh, pitch diameter is the pitch is the a basic dimension that cannot be measured. It's a theoretical location where other measurements are made. Its value is based on the number of teeth. So again, if I talked about a 48 pitch, um, uh, 24 tooth gear, it's a half inch in diameter. So the, the pitch diameter, like I said, is also called, sometimes called the pitch diameter for both gears and sprockets. It's measured as if a circle ran around the gear and passed through the approximate center of each tooth instead of across the top. And then there's a, an, another term we also do is module. Module is the metric equivalent of diametral pitch. So when you talk about module, you're mostly talking about a metric gear, uh, gear application. And of course, they're talking about number of tip teeth, we've talked about pitch diameter and the OD of a gear, and the face width of a gear. Some of these are all critical dimensions when determining uh, what type of gear you're looking for. Now, uh, WM Berg is known as a fine pitch gear company. And what is fine pitch? Fine pitch defined by AGMA is pitches that are 20 pitch and greater. Uh, AGMA stands for American Gear Manufacturers Association. Um, it's a trade group of companies that um, have set gearing standards and uh, are proponents for the gear open gearing industry. AGMA was founded in the 1916. There are about 430 AGMA members. Um, feel free to visit their website sometime on your own accord and you'll find a whole lot of great information concerning AGMA. Uh, AGMA is also um, is accredited with the National ANSI, uh, ANSI uh, to write all U.S. standards on gearing. Please note there are many different standards of making gears and understanding what, when, and how the gear is or was manufactured is important when accurate design is required. Um, perfect example is we're going to discuss the approximate equivalent gear classes. Uh, WM Berg uses AGMA 2000A88. The international standards that I show here are ISO, DIN, and, Jam and uh, JIS. JIS stands for Japanese Industrial Standard. DIN, uh, it actually means German Institute for Standardization. And the DIN number would be corresponding to our 2000 A88 is DIN 3990. And then there is the IOS, which is the International Standards Organization, which uses uh, standard 6336. Um, so when we're talking about AGMA standards, the class of gear uh, helps determine the quality of the of the gear. So if we're talking about an AGMA class, the lower the number, the coarser the gear or the uh, less accurate the gear is in a tolerancing standpoint, where the higher the number, the more accurate a gear. So quality numbers in ANSI go from Q3 to Q15, with Q15 representing the most highest accurate gear, and with Q3 being the most coarse. WM Berg helps our customers understand those numbers through a program called our Gear Spec Program. You can find it on our website at WWM, uh, www.wmberg.com uh, backslash tools backslash and what this program does is you put in your gear quality in uh, the number of teeth, the diametral pitch, and the pressure angle, 
and a thing called backlash class. We'll get into the backlash class a little later into the uh, into the presentation, and it will give you all of this working data for you to determine whether this gear will work, and help you determine the, your best gear solution. Now, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to contact, contact us at 1-800-232-2374. Or you can contact me at WMBerg Support, uh, WMBerg Tech Support at WMBerg.com. Again, that's WMBerg Tech Support at WMBerg.com. Now let's talk about the gear types that WMBerg offers. Uh, the gear types we have are uh, numerous. What you see up in the left hand is the most common, which is a spur gear hubless. To the right of it is a pinion wire. Pinion wire is basically a spur gear with no hole through it. And then you can slice off sections to make whatever gear face width that you're looking for. Then there's an anti-backlash gear. An anti-backlash gear, and we'll get into what anti-backlash, takes up any slop that a gear might have in between um, its play within a gear. Then there's a helical gear. You can see the difference between a spur gear and a helical gear is the, is the big picture, the big slant angles of the teeth. And I'll tell, explain a little bit about which gear is beneficial. And then you've got miter and bevel gears. Uh, they usually, most uh, WM Berg gears are uh, miter gears in the sense they run in 90 degree angles to each other. And then we have internal spur gears, which is the same thing as spur gear, but except the teeth are internal in orientation. And then we offer spur gear rack in round and rectangular. And then worm and worm gears. The lower part of that thing is what's called the worm. It looks like a screw thread. And the upper one is called a worm gear. When you're dealing with worms and worm gears, and we'll get into more of that uh, a little farther in the presentation. Spur gears are the most recognized style of gear. Um, spur gears are straight cut gears. They're the simplest type of gears. Um, spur gears exclusively transmit rotary motion between parallel shafts while maintaining a uniform speed and torque. They permit high manufacturing tolerances to be attained because of the straight cuts. Helical gears are similar to spur gears with the exception that the teeth are cut at 45 degree angles to the bore. The gear sets operate quieter and smoother than spur gears, but they also can um, have a uh, can generate an axial thrust loads that are developed during operation and must be considered when selecting bearings and mounting arrangements. The angled teeth are arranged more gradually than do the teeth are engaged more gradually than do a spur gears, causing them to run more smoothly and quietly. With, para with parallel helical gears, each pair of teeth first make contact at a single point at one side of the gear wheel. A moving curve of contact then grows gradually across the tooth face to a maximum and then recedes until the teeth break contact at a single point on the opposite side. In spur gears, teeth suddenly meet at a line of contact across the entire width, causing stress and noise. Spur gears make a characteristic whine at high speeds, whereas spur gears are used for low speed applications and those situations where noise control is not a problem. The use of helical gears is indicated when an application involves high speeds large power transmission, or where noise abatement is important. A disadvantage, again, of helical gears is a resultant thrust load along the axis of the gear, which needs to be accommodated by appropriate thrust bearings and a greater degree of sliding friction between the meshing gears. And then there's gear racks, best described as spur gears of infinite pitch radius. They transfer rotary motion into linear motion. Racks will make pinions of the same pitch so you can't have a 16-pitch rack driving a 24-pitch pinion. When dealing with helical, the nice thing about helical will allow you to drive perpendicular shaft mountings in different drive orientations. And what you see here is a number of different helicals giving you different drive orientations based on the design application. So you'll see that you can actually get different rotations, counter rotations, and different uh, directions, all with the different gear sets.
Bevel, gear, bevel gears are used exclusively to transmit rotary, mission, rotary motion between intersecting, intersecting shafts. A miter gear is shaped like a, a, like a right circular cone with most of its tip cut off. When two bevel gears mesh, their imaginary vertices must occupy the same point. Miter and bevel gears come as sets and as singular items depending on the part number with W.M. Berg. A bevel gear, uh, bevel gears of one to one ratio are, re are referred to as miter gears, and we do gears of up to four to one ratios. Again, worm gears are the best choice of gearing when high drive reductions required. Worm and worm gears are their ability to prohibit back driving in most applications. Uh, worm gears resemble helical gears with the addition of a throat cut in own, uh, into the OD of the wheel. Uh, worm and worm gear assemblies must be mounted in perpendicular, on perpendicular non-intersecting shafts. And also that worm gears, uh, a helical gear or a spur gear cannot be used on a worm. Uh, worm gears need worm um, worms to run on because of the uh, additional throat that's cut into the OD of the wheel. Now when we're discussing our gears, we have uh, three different mounting types that we currently deal with. Um, one is a, one of the gear mounting types is a hubless. It's just a flat gear with uh, straight teeth and a hole. That hole, of course, the, the shaft bore that is in that gear can be keyed. Um, or even have a set screw going through it, but it's a flat gear. Then the next one is called a pin hub, or it could be called a Berg lock. Um, but the pin hub is strictly a uh, boss is on the front with a set screw that tightens down on the shaft. The clamp type of gear currently uses four lobes that pinch around the, uh, around the shaft. This way it provides less marring of the shafting and becomes removable. The Berg lock is also a different type of clamping application that, uh, that is being used. When we're dealing with fine pitch gears in W Berg size, they average between 12 and 120 pitch, and our modules run between 0.25 and 2 mods. Our machines aren't set up to run, or we do not have tooling, um, or would be cost prohibitive to, for us to run uh, uh, pitches outside unless the quantities are there. We'd be always willing to entertain those applications if the quantities are uh, inviting, but these are our, our um, main areas of what the gear pitches that we run. When we talk about materials, Hello, our materials are uh, brass, stainless steel, aluminum, and plastic. When we talk about uh, the brass, we're talking about 464 Tobin bronze. Um, and when we deal with the stainless steels of the several types, we've got 303 stainlesses, mostly the main type we build, build our gears out of, but we can also make it in 316, 17.4 pH, um, 302 stainless, depending on what the application is. And um, our rack is made of 416 stainless steel, and rack is also we also offer our rack in 2024 T4 aluminum. So there's an example of the aluminum applications, and most of our gears, when we talk about aluminum, is made out of 2024 T4. When we deal with the plastic gears, we basically have three types of plastic gears that we're dealing with. One is a linen, a linen, linen phenolic, a nylon or a Delrin or a Seedle type of gear. If you're looking for different materials than what's listed here, feel free to contact me and WM Berg Technical Support and be glad to work with you with the various types of materials that might be required for your application. Um, again, when you're dealing with gear mounting, on page K5 on our website, there's a gear reference guide. Uh, that gives you all of the information and talks about how our gear clo our, our clamp hubs uh, are uh, attached and how the uh, assorted um, clamps are used to attach those gears. You can consult pages I-9 to I-13 to determine which clamp of our large variety will work best with your gear selection. When you're deciding on a clamp gear, make sure you're choosing the OD of the, uh, of the clamp hub, of the lobes, not the, not the bore of the shaft, or the uh, clamp will be too small. 
Other terms that we haven't got much into is pressure angle. Pressure angle is a line of tangent to the pitch circle and a line perpendicular to the tooth profile at the point of contact. Most gears in uh, the fine pitch or area are usually a 20 uh, pressure, 20 degree pressure angles. When you start getting below 48 and into the lower pitches, you'll see more and more as you get into the more coarse pitches of eight that all of a sudden they move from a 20 degree pressure angle to usually a 14 and a half. Seems to be more of an industry standard on these cases. Backlash is the amount by which the width of the tooth space exceeds the thickness of the engaging tooth of the mating gear when both gears are at a nominal center distances. Again, as, we're as you see backlash in that picture, backlash is more, when you deal with backlash, a lot of people always try to deal with the gears, but the most critical point in 80% of applications is actually the accuracy of the center to center distances of the gears that are determined through the pitch diameters of those two gear intersectors. When we're dealing with uh, backlash, we're talking about accuracies of three is just an acceptable with possibly four decimal place accuracy of those center to center distances when we're dealing to maintain um, anti backlash uh, capabilities. Anti backlash or factors that control anti backlash are the precision class of the gears. Um, again, when we talk about precision class, uh, there are there are uh, f uh, five different grades of precision class when we're dealing. It's an anti-backlash grade. And please don't confuse anti-backlash -ba uh, precision grit classes to um, AGMA classes. Those are two totally separate items when we're dealing with a uh, backlash class. And when we're dealing with, um, with a and with a spur gear, the anti-backlash class can be anywhere with A being the highest backlash to E being the lowest backlash class when you're determining a gear. So what what does this mean for a person who's designing and wants to reduce a backlash? Instead of ordering a gear that would be a Q12, very accurate gear in all state stasis, because you want less backlash, you could possibly take your Q12 and drop it to a Q10, and then take your backlash class and make it at a class E, which is the lowest backlash, and achieve the same kind of results you were looking for instead of purchasing a Q12 gear. The center distance, of course, are very, uh, are very important in these kinds of determinations, and the type of fit between the gears, shafts, and bearings. Precision accuracy of the bearings and straightness and adequate of support shafts, all are determining factors of, of what determines your anti-backlash. Uh, again, in gear terminations, when we are talking, and I talked earlier about our gear spec, here's a, uh, an example where uh, the A, B, C, D, E of anti-backlash, you can see here that the difference between the uh, test radiuses um, of the uh, 48 pitch 10 uh, class A and a 48 pitch class E has a, a totally different tolerance of on the test radiuses and the mouth dimensions are also greatly different. So you can see how by playing with our um, playing with our gear spec calculator, you can actually determine what the anti backlash is and to uh, determine what's your best course of solution depending on what you're trying to accomplish in your gear design. Um, this way, it's a much, it can become a much, it can become a way of saving much more money in the application by designing your gear specifically for its application. And again, um, at this time, if you do have questions, I'd be glad to have you, uh, please feel free to get a hold of me. Um, uh, at the WM Berg, um, you can contact us at 1-800-232-2374, or you can contact us through email at WMBerg Tech Support at WMBerg.com. Now, gear processing. Uh, what I'm talking about in gear processing are the processes that happen 
for a gear to increase its its performance. And WM Burke can follow can provide a number of the following processes. Aluminum anodizing. Uh, we anodize our gears, the aluminum gears, which give a protective coating on those on those things. We can hard coat or standard anodize. Our an standard anodizing process is a class two, and then a number of different colors if required. But our standard is clear co uh, is clear anodized. Passivation for stainless steel. A uh, passivation is a process where it removes um, extraneous iron oxides. Uh, which create rust and restores a passive oxidate layer that prevents any oxidation. Some people think that stainless steel doesn't rust, but there are on some stainless steels um, a tendency for uh, some carbons to adhere that would then cause um, uh, small little rust spots on a piece of stainless steel. And also passivation has a tendency to take out magnetic properties um, of those uh, uh, in, in stainless steel that might have uh, occurred due to the working of the steel. Um, articles of first inspection is something that we can also do, or materials, material certs and special labeling if it's required. I also like to note that all WM Bergs are Rojas and REACH compliant, uh, which is uh, quite important. A Rojas stands for uh, restrictive materials. They're basically looking to make sure that lead is inappropriate. Uh, is not used in the process or is in the materials themselves in many cases. And Rojas is a uh, uh, probably about 15 or 16 uh, items that are on the uh, Rojas list. REACH is a European that prevents uh, some of these processes, and right now REACH has 144 different items that are uh, prohibited to go into the European Union. So before you um, send any gears into Europe, they're usually asking if they are REACH compliant. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions concerning Rojas and REACH compliancy issues. AGMA quality, uh, again, um, WM Bergs are manufactured to the ANSI AGMA 2000 A88 standard and Backlash Class C. That's our standard. Um, gears that do not meet that specification are considered a modified standard, and they have to be quoted on a case-by-case -case basis. Again, um, if here's the information, if you need to get a hold of me, uh, you can write that information down right now. Uh, but uh, again, uh, our gears are the standards that you'll find on our website and in our catalogs. Our WM Berg, again, uh, our gear pitches are from a 12 diametral pitch through a 120 that diametral pitch, which we discussed earlier. The thing that I do also want to talk about is that our machines allow us to bring that those uh, pitches at 120 to down to as small as a 0.25 diameter, and the uh, diameter is up to 12 inches in diameter. Um, and on a module, we can make our gears as small as 6 millimeters in diameter and as big as 300 millimeters in diameter. Our machines are difficult to work outside these numbers. Uh, remember, use the Berg uh, Customer Inquiry Department if you have any questions concerning your applications. And you can also use what be the uh, Berg Customer Inquiry document. What you see on your left, they just give us a call, and your service person will send you a copy of this unit. All you have to do is fill in. It shows you the hub list, the style lumps, and all the information for us to get you a quote for your gear. And I know now to decipher WM Berg's numbers, let's go into some how our uh, deciphering our catalog numbers are. WM Berg part numbers are based on an alphanumeric system. The first one of these three characters tells you the mounting style of the part. So the P stands for pin hub, F would stand for a hubless gear, C for a clamp, R would represent a rack gear, and if you put an A in front of so, so if you had an AC gear, and AC would represent an anti-backlash clamp hub, or an AP would represent an anti-backlash pin hub uh, gear. And then PSX represents pinion shaft. We also sell pinion wire, which you discussed earlier, which is raw pinion wire, uh, pinion stock. Pinion wire is an extruded process where they take the um, a billet, heat it up and push it through a um, uh, through an extruder. The accuracy of a pinion wire is not as good, but it 
does work in a pinch. Usually, uh, most pinion wires are about an AGMA 5 in, uh, in uh, AGMA ratings. And then N that represents internal with a W or M being a worm or miter gear. The second set of characters tells you the pitch of the gear. For, so, example, if you're talking about a P24 S3548, the 24 in that number represents the pitch. The third set of gear of characters is the material. So S equals stainless steel. And what you see down below is the standard A, B, and the other numbers that represent our materials. Again, these these numbers, like example, is anything that would be modified. If you're looking for a 316 or a non-standard number, you'd have to specify that as a modified standard. Otherwise, any of those letters would represent the part, the material as stated. The fourth set of character tells you the blank type of the gear. So when we make all of our gears, our gears are made from blanks, which means that we take a piece of raw steel, machine a bore hub, example is we're talking a pin hub, we create a pin hub gear by machining the whole gear, put the whole two tolerance to it, we just would not cut the teeth. So when you make that gear, what happens is the gear would have a quarter inch bore, per se, and a uh, pin hub on it. We could then put uh, the OD of that uh, that gear could be uh, about one and three sixteenths. From that one and three sixteenths uh, OD of that pin hub uh, blank, we could uh, do a twenty-four pitch twenty-four tooth gear. We could do a forty-eight to forty-eight pitch gear, and we could do a ninety-six ninety-six tooth gear, all from the same blank. This way, it becomes it helps us. Uh, to be able to produce your gear in a quicker in a quicker time period by keeping these blanks in stock. And here's an example of and uh, on the previous page it had directions to the index to those pin hubs. So what you see here is if you're looking at the 24 pitch gears, it tells you that the, the number of a, the first four digits it'll give you the pitch, the face, the bore of all those and what page you could find all those gears on. So all you need is the pitch, face, and bore to locate most of those things, and all it is is just inserting your tooth number after that point, which is the tooth count, which is the last dash number at the end. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this application. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to give us a call. And if there's any other things, please keep attached to and, and keep informed uh, on Facebook with WM Berg. Uh, feel free to go to our website. Uh, we will be uh, doing other presentations on some of the other Berg's uh, components, uh, like um, belts, sprockets, chains, uh, linear products, and couplings at a future date. Again, thank you for your time. This is WM Berg thanking you for spending your time.